of fire for eternity because they chose to go and be where the devil's at rather than where God and Jesus is at. Amen. And it, let me go ahead and say very quickly, it's not his will that any of you, any of us, anybody should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Amen. And when Jesus walked this earth and started his ministry, he preached the same message that John the Baptist preached. Repent, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It is very, very near. Amen. It is happening. The kingdom of heaven is coming. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. And so they preached repentance. And he said, these are the things that will follow those who believe me and live for me and who obey me and do my will. How many knows when you preach the word, uh, the word will have proof. The word will back itself up, amen. God will affirm it because the word came from God and Jesus is God and he is the word because in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God, amen. And he is still the same today as he's ever been. So when he sends his word, I guarantee you he can back it up. A lot of people will say on earth, earthly, we've all been guilty of saying things we couldn't back up. A lot of times just tall tales and a bunch of talk, uh, but no walk and no action behind it. I want to tell you, when Jesus tells you, he can back it up. He can guarantee it because he will do it. Amen. Praise God. And he said, these are some of the things that will happen to those who believe, his followers. He said, in my name shall they cast out devils. I had a demon cast out of me the night I got saved and come out of me. So I know this firsthand. Preacher, do you really believe demons are real? Oh, yeah, they're real, amen. They're working. They're at work in the earth. Why do you think these people are running around killing people? Uh, it's a sin problem. It's not a psychological problem like everybody wants to claim. I'll tell you what it is. It's a rejection of truth. It's a rejection of God and Jesus. And because of it, we reap what we sow, amen. It's a sin problem. Now, I realize there are some people that have some mental problems. But where we have come is away from God. But Jesus said that these signs will follow. Uh, they'll cast out devils. Demons will come out of people in his name. Amen. He said, in my name, demons will come out when you use my authority. And you're walking in that authority and walking in that power. And he said they'll speak with new tongues. That's the gift of other languages that came at the day of Pentecost. And it's still alive today. A lot of people want to say all these gifts they went out with the apostles. Well, they may have for you. They may have never started for you. But I've been a part of just about every gift there is. Amen. I've seen them operate and have experienced uh, uh, most gifts of the nine gifts of the Spirit in some form, fashion, way or another. And I know by my heart, I know by the Spirit and the Word and the power of God that they're real. And what God says, He's able to perform. Amen. He's not a God that just puffs smoke and blows out hot air. He's a God that can do what you need him to do for you. Amen. He said they'll take up serpents. And if, he said, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. And they shall lay hands on the sick. And they shall recover. Amen. And there's one of the great signs uh, that Jesus preached. And he did in his earthly ministry. The apostles did it and the disciples did it. It said after he had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven, set on the right hand of God, and they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Amen. Because they were believers and they preached the word, God backed it up. 
and to prove that he is God and on his throne, that we're just not down here running our mouths and talking a bunch of talk. We are down here under the anointing and the inspiration of the Holy Ghost power because power has come and that power is still readily available, amen, right now to whosoever will drink and let them come and drink of that fountain of the water of life, of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Christian, if you don't have the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you are missing out on a powerful anointing, a powerful gift. It's a river that flows within you. We need the fullness of the power of God. We need the baptism of the Holy Ghost for this power to work in this earth and manifest Jesus. Amen. I don't want to be blowing hot air and smoke. I want to have some fire of the power of God coming through. Amen. That will get some things done and signs follow believers. Amen. They won't follow unbelief. They follow believers. God don't work in unbelief. Anybody that came to Jesus for a healing, the lepers, whoever it may have been, he said, according to your faith, according to your faith it will be. And it, when they believed and just had faith in who he was and what he could do, they got their healing, they got their miracle. Whatever the need was, he met it according to his riches and glory. Amen. And he is seated at the right hand of God the Father right now. But the power's here to get the job done. The power of the Holy Ghost is at work, and angels are here to minister and help minister uh, out the gospel. They're co-laborers with us to this ministry and to work the works of God in the earth. And they went forth, preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following Amen. I want to take for a title uh, this, at this time, Accompanying Signs accompanying signs, signs that follow a believer. There will be accompanying signs in a believer's life if it's real, if they've got something real, and if they called of God and got an anointing when they preach or teach, whatever that gift is for Christ, when they use it, especially the gift of preaching, uh, God will bless and He will prove that He is God. He will work and show us and show people that he is on the throne he is not dead God is not dead he is alive and well amen seated on the high throne seated as supreme God over all supreme courts and justices God is God amen and signs accompanying signs follow believers if you're a believer you're going to have some evidence you're going to leave a trail behind you're going to leave something for people to follow to get to Jesus, amen, to find their way and know the way and know that God is God. Why does Jesus heal? Because he's compassionate, because he wants to show his glory. And we need the divine power and signs manifest in this earth like never before. We need the miracles. We need the evidence. We need the proof that God is God. Amen. Amen. Luke chapter 10, and Jesus sent his uh, disciples. He had the 12 he called, and he gave them power to cast out devils, to preach. And he said, preach the kingdom, cast out devils, and heal the sick. Amen. When you preach, let there be some evidence of what you're preaching. Let me work, God. God wants to work and show himself strong. He wants to deal with the devil and put him in his place. Amen. And he said that he had his twelve, and they went out and anointed with oil and healed many that were sick and cast out demons. In Luke 10, 1, 2, and verse 9, it said, After these things, the Lord appointed over 70 also. So he had 82 at one time that were ministering and preaching the gospel, and that were, man, they were setting the earth on fire, amen. There was some power, there was some evidence and some reality that God is on the move, God is on the scene, God is at work. See, we don't have just a religion. 
We've got a relationship and we've got power and we don't have a deadbeat religion that's deader than a doorknob. We have something to get the job done. We have somebody in us called the Holy Ghost and he will work and move if we'll believe. Signs will accompany. They will follow a believer. They'll be the trail. They'll be tracks that Jesus has been there. Amen. And he appointed other seventy and sent them two and two before his face into every city and place whither he himself would come. And therefore said he unto them, The harvest truly is great, but the labors are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of harvest that he would send forth labors into his harvest. You know, one of the great prayers to pray is God send people across those lost people's track. Send somebody in my loved ones a life in the end of their life that can speak and minister unto them. And God send us, amen. He's wanting to send laborers to preach this gospel. But he don't want us to labor to the place we wear ourselves out. He gives us the power and there's joy unspeakable and full of the spirit, uh, full of the power. When we go in Jesus' power and in his strength, there's going to be accompanying signs are going to follow uh, believers. And wherever they went, there was miracles. There was signs. There was demons getting cast out. There was people getting healed left and right because signs follow believers. Amen. And he said in verse 9, Heal the sick that are therein. Say unto them, The kingdom of God has come nigh unto you. Well, glory to God. See, because they can identify and they get touched by that power. And he heals lost people just as fast. A lot of times certain people will get healed quicker than Christians. Uh Uh-oh, y'all looking at me. Like he don't heal lost people. Yes, he does. Oh, yes, he is healing lost. That's part of helping them to believe and know he's compassionate and full of love. That's his grace and his mercy, amen, that he'll heal people to show. He didn't say go to the Christians. They weren't any Christians at that time. He just said go preach the gospel and heal the sick. And when they they get healed, they're going to realize his love and his compassion for them. We believe that they've got to be all perfect. No, I pray for people. I'll pray for a lost person if they'll let me pray for them for their healing just like I'll pray for your healing. Amen. Amen. Because it proves to them God's real. It humbles them. It shows them that God is real. It's evidence that God is on the scene. Heal the sick that are therein. Say unto them, the kingdom of God has come nigh unto you. Well, preacher, I still don't believe that he heals lost people. You better read the Bible when you see where he come to the demonic of Gennesaret and come up to him. And this man had thousands of demons in him and nobody could tame him. He, would, he didn't even have a mind to ask to be saved. Oh, he, he was totally possessed and Jesus delivered him and set him free. That's a great deliverance and a great healing of the mind all in one, praise God. That's what he come for, to save the lost, to heal the sick, and deliver and to heal the sick that are therein. Say the kingdom of God has come near you. Acts 8, 5 and 8, Philip went down to the city of Samaria and he preached Christ unto them. When Jesus is preached, signs and miracles are going to happen because when he's lifted up, things are going to happen. Deutimus power, explosive power is going to be readily available and going to manifest the power of God in this earth through believers. Philip preached Christ. And, And what is Christ? Who is Christ? He didn't say he preached Jesus which he did, but he said he preached Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. Remember what Christ means? The anointed one. He preached, hey, I'm preaching about one who's anointed, and he's anointing can destroy and break the yoke and the oppression and save you Samaritans, amen. Amen. And he preached, and they had a great revival. A revival broke out because he preached Christ, the anointed one. 
And the people with one one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. They heard what he was saying, and they heard what was being preached, and they connected what was being preached with the word. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word, and they connected that hearing by the word and by faith, and people, they saw the works, the evidence accompanying signs follow believers. They saw the work of God in action. They just didn't hear a Bible story. They didn't hear just a Sunday school teacher. They didn't hear uh, just about something that happened years ago or happened in Jesus' day. He said uh, like Paul said, this same Jesus that I preach unto you he's the Christ. Amen. Amen. Still got all power. And he preached and there was deliverance and there was healing and they gave a court and unclean spirits crying with loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them and many taken with palsies and that were lame were healed. Amen. Healing, deliverance, and they were, there was great joy in that city. When Jesus comes and he heals and delivers, there's joy, praise God, going to break out. There was a revival, and the depression and the power of the devil was being defeated left and right, and Samaria had a great revival under the preaching of a young man named Philip because signs follow believers. God's going to perform His Word. When that Word is preached, it's got God's authority, it's got God's power, it's God's promise, it's what God said, not what man said. It is what God said, and they were speaking it by the Spirit. He was full of the Holy Ghost and full of faith, and the evidence accompanying signs manifest because of the Word and because Jesus is at the right hand of the Father. He said they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them, confirming his word with signs following. Here's what James tells us to do. In the book of James, chapter 5, 13 and 16, he said, is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Talk to God about it. Oh, come on now. Is any merry? Let them break out in a song, amen. Let them praise him. If you need to pray, pray. But in your prayer, I like to give him some praise when I pray. I like to come before him and give him some praise and thank him. Oh, my God, for all that he does. Yesterday at work, I turned my foot completely over to the, on the side of my left foot, just flopped over and went all the way in my ankle. A bone about touched the ground. That's how it twisted and turned over and turned down. And immediately I brought my foot back up. And you know what? I ain't got no pain. Glory to God. I ain't got no swelling. I went as quick as it happened. I said, Lord Jesus, don't let nothing come out of this. Don't let nothing bad, don't let my foot be messed up or broke. I can't afford it. Well, guess what? I'm here right now preaching and nothing come out of it. God is a good God. He's faithful, amen. He's faithful to his word. So as any among you merry, let him sing songs. As any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him. If anybody's sick, what did he say do? Call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him or her, anointing them with oil. Amen. In the name of the Lord, anointing them with holy oil set apart for the purpose of God. Let them pray over the sick. Let them call for the elders and let them pray over them. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And the Lord shall raise him up if he hath committed sins. This is talking really about people who can't even get up out of the bed, who can't even get to church to get there to get their healing. Said, let them call for the elders, amen. And if they're so sick, when they get through praying, if the prayer of faith has been prayed, and if there's any sin connected to it, when the prayer of faith, and they receive that prayer of faith for their healing, and get that connection with the Holy God through the anointing and using the anointing oil, they're going to be raised up. They're going to get up out of that sick bed. They're going to live, amen, because God is our healer through Jesus Christ. 
The prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he's committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. I like that. That's a full package deal. Amen. Uh, and confess your faults one to another, and pray one for another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Jesus wants us to pray one for another that we would be healed. If we've got ailments, if we've got sickness, disease, uh, one of the things I love that God has used me a lot is to help get people delivered from depression and oppression. Amen. Off the mind. And I glory to God, I love it when he does that. I love it when he breaks those chains off people because the old devil can oppress and he can depress and get people down. I look at that just as much as a healing, just like the physical, physical because it affects you. It affects the outcome and the way you feel about life. It robs you of joy and peace, amen. But I'm glad this Holy Ghost will give you joy unspeakable and full of the Holy Ghost power. Joy unspeakable. The effectual prayer of a righteous man availeth much. When we pray one for another, the Lord will heal, amen. He's a healer. I believe in the gifts of healing. I believe in miracles, the working of miracles. I believe in all the gifts of God. I believe that they're still for today. And I believe when this gospel is preached, there's going to be evidence, amen. There's going to be a reality that God is on the move and God is on the scene. That God is working in this earth just like he was when Jesus was on this earth. He has given us power. Jesus said, all power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore. Here he told them to go preach. And then in another place he said, and teach the nations about me. Teach them how to live. Teach them how to be disciples. Go and teach all nations, making disciples of all nations. Amen. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things, everything that I've commanded you. And lo, I'll be with you always, even unto the end of the earth. I will be with you to work and manifest glory. His glory and His power. Hebrews 13, 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He don't change. He's the same. You can bank on it. What He did 2,000 years ago, He'll do today. Amen. He can raise the dead. I've seen it. I've been a part of it. My daddy died many years ago laying on the bed. God, I spoke in tongues for 45 minutes. My daddy was laying there just as dead. And then when I got, I'm telling you, at 45 minutes later, speaking in tongues, praying in tongues, his eyes popped back. And his eyes come back and came back in their place. And he came alive immediately because the power of effectual, fervent prayer, amen, can do more than you can think or ask. I've seen a lot of miracles and I've seen all kinds of healings. We had a woman where I work at the retirement home. She came there and moved in. She had a back brace on, one of these big, thick back braces. She couldn't even ride hardly in a vehicle, especially couldn't ride in a bus. And uh, one day I was parked up on the upper parking area, and she came walking by, and she was walking by, and I had my laptop and had my Bible software and was reading and studying the Bible software, and she said, what you doing? And I told her, and she was amazed at the technology of that Bible software, and that was many years ago, and she was just uh, amazed at that. And she said, well, pray for my back. And I said, I will. I'll pray for it. And she walked on her way and went on, and I prayed, amen, and asked God to heal her and move and to touch her. And she came back by the car and went down in the little garden area. And I pulled by and I, I said, I prayed for you for God to heal you. Two weeks later, I came in the lobby of the retirement home. And she comes up and says, oh, Ricky, I've been wanting to see you and tell you. She said, you healed me. I said, no, ma'am, I didn't. I said, God healed you if you got healed. God did it and Jesus did it. And she said, I don't wear the back brace. This is an 80-year-old woman. She says, I don't wear the back brace anymore. 
I don't need it, said God healed me when you prayed for me. I started getting better that very day. Guess what? She moved back to Florida, back in her home that she left, amen, and said God was not finished with her, that she had a work to do at 80 years old. He is a healing physician. He is the great physician. He is the healer. He is the savior. Whatever you need, he can meet that need because he is God and he will work for you if you will let him and put his word to work trust in his word trust in what he says trust and obey believe signs follow believers they do not follow unbelief God does not work in unbelief our signs follow believers if you're a true believer you're going to have some evidence God is going to back up his word amen when you preach it and when you teach it, when you send his word, it'll accomplish what he, what he sends it to do. I'd like to pray for you by way of TV and YouTube right now. Father God, I pray your healing power, your healing anointing to flow, God, right there where they're at. By the power of the Spirit, your angels go forth and minister to the afflicted, the sick, and the oppressed, the diseased. God, heal them, Father, and deliver them, and minister to them, and set the captives free. Those that are bound by demons and powers of the devil, set them free in Jesus' name. I plead the blood of Jesus over you right now. And in the name of Jesus, be healed right now. Receive your healing. Reach out and get it. Reach out and touch him with your faith and he'll touch you with his power right where you're at because signs accompany believers. Signs follow believers in the name of Jesus. Whatever you need today or tonight, wherever you're at or whatever time you receive or watching this, you can watch it 10,000 years from now and still get a healing because God is still God and will honor his word. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God for Jesus Christ. We're here to worship and glorify Jesus on this earth. We're here to preach his gospel till he comes back. And when he comes, we won't need to preach. When he comes, we won't need another healing. We'll be in a glorified body. All we'll do is eat of the tree of life for eternity. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Amen, amen. Praise God. God is so good. We invite you to watch again and look for the program and these other ministers that come on Church of the Air and just watch and listen and be touched and be blessed. And I know that God, if you want to send a gift to the ministry to help uh, the ministry of Church of the Air, then they could deeply use it and appreciate it, especially here at Christmas time. There's a lot of needs, and they're doing a great work to reach out to the lost and to help the community. And so if you could send or want to send a gift, just send that gift to them and bless them and let them use that for the glory of God. We're not about money. They're not about money. We're about souls, amen, about souls. And that's what we need Today is souls to be saved. It's what God wants. That's what he come for. Amen is for souls. God bless you. We love you. Hope to see you the next time. You'll tune in and watch. God bless you.